All right, welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft Amplified server. Wasn't that awesome? That was lovely. That was a new song by Izuku dedicated to me, which is a real privilege and an honor. It is Englishman in YouTube. I love the name of it. And that song is absolutely amazing. As soon as I heard that, I thought, right, next episode we are starting off with a time lapse immediately and using that song. And we did it. We did some work on the potion room, which we're going to go and take a look at in a moment, but there's some things over here that I want to show you. But of course, and there's going to be a link to the song down there in the description box. Be sure to go over to this video, show him some love. I really do appreciate um, the song. It was absolutely lovely, and it put a massive smile on my face, and still, uh, I still got the smile. <laughs> I love it. It's, it's amazing. I really like the song, and I just noticed that there are some slabs on this side that aren't on the other side. Um, yes, yeah, so anyway, links down there in the description box. You can download this song for free if you like it. And uh, let's talk about uh, what we've been doing recently because I did a live stream a couple of days ago. And check it out. We built this little transition from this area over to this area because before it was a big, ugly cobblestone box. And let's ignore the fact that there's a little bit of cobblestone left over. I don't have any end stone, otherwise, I could have filled that one in at least. So I got to come over at some point and just finish that off. But otherwise, it's a nice little transition. Nothing too fancy. It is a bit square and boxy, but we, you know, kind of made some cool things on the side here to just break up the flat wall and I think it looked pretty good. So another part of the nether hub um, that is continually like evolving. I love this thing. It's so interesting the way it just constantly shifts from one room to another and there's loads of things to go and see all in uh, the different directions which is really cool. So um, yeah that's what we did in the live stream. We also did some work on the base so we should probably head back over there so I can show you what we did and talk about the time lapse at the beginning of course. Here's something that I should be using more. I haven't been using ender pearls hardly at all this season. I don't know what's up with it. Makes life easier sometimes, doesn't it? Bam, there we go. We're down here. So, the pixel art. I know this hasn't been too popular with some of you. Some of you really do appreciate that uh, it's, you know, it's kind of difficult to work with such a small space and represent the item. But over on this side, you can see there's there's a big difference between the two. The reason why is because I picked the best looking ones to do first of all, of course, and it is real difficult. So you're probably looking at this, wondering what's going on. I think the carrots look all right. The golden carrot looks really good, actually. And the puffer fish, if you couldn't tell that's what it is, that's probably about the best that you can do um, with, you know, this kind of space, because that item has a lot of detail to it. So I think it's a uh, a really difficult thing to do but it just about works however it doesn't look too great I know and once again by the way these were made um, by the guys on my server really do appreciate them uh, helping me out with this stuff and they also made this with sponge which looked a lot better than sand but I don't have a lot of sponge in fact I don't think I have any sponge at all one thing we haven't done this season is go and conquer a ocean monument funny enough <laughs> yeah and uh, so over here we have your spider eye and then over here we have the Flamented Spider Eye. I messed around with this one a little bit more, made it a little bit bigger, because otherwise it would sort of be off-centre, and that probably wouldn't have looked too bad. Uh, but those two especially are really difficult to represent with such a limited amount of blocks. So I thought I'd put it to all of you, if you have any suggestions um, for ways we can improve this, like tr try and do it yourself, give it a go. You can tweet me a picture if you make something that you looks better, but I think most of you are going to go out there uh, you know, get some blocks, start building it, and find that with such a small space, it is really difficult. So, if you're interested in doing that, it is one, two, three, four, five, six by seven across, and it's really difficult. And I think the guys have done a really great job, but it feels like with those two, it's just probably never going to look good. Um, and the puffer fish is kind of I'm umming and ahhing about it, but we'll keep it for now. And you can see over here that we've got this hopper right in the middle of our thing and that's because up above and once again <laughs> the ender pearls are going to come in handy in here let's throw it right through that gap oh and we're <laughs> sort of stuck inside 
We're sort of standing above nothing and stuck inside of something. Let's go down here. I'm not sure what happened there, but we're up the top, which is cool. Now this contraption right here could possibly do with a redesign, but I kind of feel like um, it might be tricky to make it the size we want it to be. But I came over here and did some measuring, and the roof of the potion area is at this height right here, which means a lot of this needs to be moved up. So I sort of left in the hopper with the torch on top to show you just how much space this contraption uses because of course we have to use gravity so the blocks need to fall down and I never finished this thing as well because we needed a way to transport um, the items that landed in the hopper back to the player um, so there's like a whole bunch of reasons to redesign this plus this side over here no longer looks like that side and this whole thing's probably going to get a redesign but we built it sort of based around the player standing here and interacting with it and I think that they could perhaps walk up a ladder or we make some sort of staircase they can go higher up and we just have to move this machine around which is something that we're going to do soon uh, it's kind of unfortunate though but that's the way things are going to go with this base because everything is so kind of close together and uh, and all of that so that'll probably change and we need to use the space behind there um, for the potion brewing but I'm not sure what we're going to do this episode actually from this point. Probably continuing working on this floor, you know, maybe finish the roof. But let's go over here and talk about the potion setup. So something quite amusing happened. I was reading my comments, lots of people saying you should use the witch farm to get some bottles. I had loads of comments about it in my stream. And I was thinking, it's a nice suggestion, but right now the last thing I want to do is build a witch farm, considering they're going to break in uh, 1.9. And I thought everyone was talking about the witch farm that we have on the surface over in that direction, building a farm, automating the collection of the bottles and delivering them over here. Now that is a cool idea and something we'll probably do one day uh, when we get round to building that farm. Hello, Bat. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I didn't think it was a practical thing to do right now, and loads of people were suggesting it on the live stream, and it took me forever to realise they were talking about the quad witch farm that already existed, because Tango, come here, I gotcha, <laughs> Tango has uh, already built, or Tango and Impulse um, have built like a storage system with a filtering system for the bottles, so I went over there, and there were just chests upon chests upon chests filled up with empty bottles. And, uh, and then we filled up the whole system. So I stood here checking that it worked, you know, making sure uh, all the bottles are going through, and it does. So if we open this one, you can see that the items are being held back because it's full at the top. That means nothing is going to get um, stuck inside our system. And the only problem that we had in the beginning was that the redstone I had up there, we'll go and have a look at it, was pointing into a block, and that was locking the hopper. So if we come over here, you can see... Um, if there was a block there, the redstone would point into it, and it would lock that one right there, which actually has some items in it. So there's a bit of a time delay here. When this one fills up, you're going to get an extra eight bottles come through, but no more than that, and I think that is absolutely fine. So now, wherever we go, you will see that there is just bottle after bottle, chests full of bottles, hoppers full of bottles everywhere, and this thing is really ready to go when we get the materials for it. So we did the uh, magma creams for this one. You can see it brewed all the way up to here, all the way up to there, I want me some fire potions, I take them out, you know, from the front obviously, and the thing just starts going. And then, uh, <laughs> right now it's going to happen I think, the water bottles will then unlock this thing. Well I only took five, didn't I? And let's see what's happening here, shouldn't they be filtering through a bit quicker? Actually no. See I took five, but it's only going to put three bottles into the brewing stand at once. So yeah, it would only move forward by three. So even if we take some more of these, we're still going to have to wait. Oh, there they go. The thing unlocks, which means if we pop down below, this is no longer powered. And we sort of saw it a little bit there. So a few items have gone through. They're going up the item elevator, uh, but now it's locked. So no more items will go through. That is awesome. It's really great to see that in action. So it would appear that it works. Possibly flawlessly, we might find a problem with it later on. Um, as of right now, what I'd like to do is grab some comparators and uh, show you another idea I had for this room. Uh, let's go grab some and yeah, I'll explain it once I've got them. So the other feature that I thought about for this whole setup is a way to detect when your items are low or you've run out of them. And at the moment, I'm not really sure if this is possible, uh, but where I've been thinking about it, I wanted to show you roughly how this might be able to work. So we need to create some sort of gate where when one of them is empty, it, it sets off an alarm. We want to link them all together um, just so we can see that. So what I was thinking is if you do this right here, and the comparator at the top is going to power this block, the one at the bottom here is going to power that block, which means they're both powering this piece of redstone. Now the problem here is that if one of them runs out, the other one is still powering it, 
Um, so then if you had a torch on the side of here, it would turn on if both of them run out. But really what we want is a system where if just one of them turns off, you're then going to get notified. So we kind of need to invert this. Um, so if we were to put, let's say, a torch on either side, they would be turned off. And if they could hook up to the same piece of redstone, uh, then as soon as one of them runs out of ingredients, that line of redstone would turn on. We could send it to a lamp or something like that. That's actually the way it would work. <laughs> I didn't have a solution before I started doing this. I just sort of knew uh, the problem that I had briefly looked at. So over on this side, it would be the same thing again. And we would do that. And what's cool about what we've done on the other side, by the way, is that some of the ones we're going to do on the opposite side will have four ingredients. And so we can kind of replicate this right here. So the piece of redstone that they can both interact with is actually <laughs> where that carpet is or sorry above where the carpet is but that means we need a block and that's going to point into the comparator which may or may not cause an issue I'm not sure I've got a feeling um, that it it would I'm gonna have to go and test this in a test world because otherwise we'll mess everything up uh, but I think we might also be able to interact with another piece of redstone if we go something like this if we put a block there and there both of those are, <laughs> yeah, now we're, now we're messing around with these hoppers here. So both of them would interact with this piece of redstone and we could take a signal from it. Um, but yeah, that would lock the hopper. So there's got to be some sort of solution here and it looks like there's probably enough space. I mean, they're both going to go straight forward. We can even have that and that wouldn't interact with anything else. Actually, that looks like the solution, doesn't it? That can then run across the front. It shouldn't mess around with anything because it's at the height of the chest so if it was alongside a hopper it might lock it but being at the height of the chest it might just go across the front there and I think we have actually redstone together here on camera today amazing so we have another one right here we have a line of redstone that comes across and we'll probably put it all on slabs just to make sure there's no problems and then somewhere down here we can just hook it up to a lamp that goes through to the front so if we go around to the front where exactly do we want to put that lamp is my next question and i tell you what, if this works, we're going to hook it up right now because it's going to look ever so cool. Um, so ideally, you'd like to put it in the middle. That means, you know, sort of going um, right in the middle of <laughs> all of the pixel art, which wouldn't look good. So probably just on one of these corners, really. Because we've got two, I'd be inclined to put them on both. Maybe what we can do is take out the andesite here and replace them with uh, redstone lamps. I'll probably give that a try, first of all. So I'm going to grab some materials and let's see if we can wire this thing up. Well, this has turned out to be the redstone challenge. It is quite tricky to work in these small spaces and get things how you want. But if we just hop up here, and that was a very successful hop, let's try that again. Um, you'll be able to see what exactly it is um, we've done. So I've arranged it like this on the side. We then have this one line of redstone going all the way across, and we use a piston to transfer the signal downwards. And that makes it tileable just here. You can see that... Um, this redstone right here isn't going to interfere with the circuit on the opposite side. So all of that's good. Done it all the way down this side over here. And uh, and then I've come over to this area and it's very difficult to get it in the right place because the way that the hoppers were going at the top before meant that they would never interfere with the redstone here. However, coming from the opposite side, they're sort of in this position right here where one of the torches will lock the hoppers up above, which isn't what we want. And I've been struggling to find a solution and I think I just found one. So what I think we're going to do for the ones on this side over here is simply have the dropper on the opposite side. Now it will still put in all three ingredients. They may be in a different order, i.e. whatever's in that one might not work if you have it in here. So you've got to shuffle them around, but they'll all end up in the hopper and in theory it should work. So I'm going to swap it, so that means what we have on this side over here, like that, will be on the opposite side on this one. So I'm hoping um, by doing that we'll be able to, to make this work. So here's a new challenge. This thing's in the way, so I'm going to have to move it around. And I hear a zombie groaning, and he's wearing full diamond armor, which is a rarity, and some of it's enchanted as well. Hi. You are extremely easy to fight. Maybe the 1.9 update will make some fun out of this. Interesting. Do I hear another one around here as well? I can't remember the last time I saw a zombie spawn in naturally with full Dharma, but I think that might actually be a first. And we got a diamond helmet from it. Although it's got protection, uh, projectile protection, we can repair that and add enchantments to it as well. So it's kind of like getting some diamonds from free in, in a weird way. <laughs> Alright, the redstone's been done, and I've tidied up the area behind it, and I just went for something very straightforward and clean here. Just used loads of stone, put dirt on the bottom so it can grow into grass over time, 
and not too much to comment on here. This is a little walkway that leads around to this bit. I like the transition into this area and this room is pretty much finished now. All of the redstone is in place. The only thing that we need to do really is fill up each of the um, brewing stands. So we've got the one in the middle, the fire resistance done and the others are yet to go. But over here you can see I've moved the redstone around just a little bit. Move this over here, tidied up the redstone down there and everything should be good to go. So the next thing that I want to do is make some more progress with this room. So I'm thinking that we should get the roof finished, going around all of this side and probably build the water bottle section over here as well. Alright, just finished placing in all of the blocks in the ceiling. Doing a quick check now because I might have missed a gap here and there. The way that I randomized it, you know, I started off with a large amount, just went around covering the whole area and then slowly filling in the gaps. But as far as I can tell, it's all done. And now we can really get a start, a start, start to get blah, 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 <laughs> with the words. Start to get a sense of uh, how this room is coming together. And it's looking pretty fantastic. You know, it takes a lot of time to do this stuff. And uh, we've made like a reasonable amount of progress just building uh, the kind of things that you've seen before to some extent. But, you know, it's all going to add up to something amazing. If we just go up to the top here, I wanted to go look at the top floor because that's the first one that's sort of like finished. And it ended up looking real good. And I got a feeling that this potion floor is going to look just as good as this. So that is like pretty amazing right there, isn't it? I guess we've got the portal over that side to tidy up the entrance over here and uh, a few of these things. Oh, and that's right. Yeah, I've got to rename the input and output chests, and possibly this one as well, which we can break. The other ones... Oh. <laughs> no, I didn't think that one through. This one right here has got an item elevator underneath it, so we could break it. This one and that one have uh, hoppers down there, so they're just going to go into the system and disappear. So I'll go down and pick up the, uh, the dropper, but... Oh no, now replacing it is going to be a nightmare as well. If we take two chests out of here... And uh, we can rename them in an anvil. If you didn't know this, I'll show you exactly what's going on right now. So we want one that says input. And then the dropper is going to say furnace. And when you open up the chest or the inventory, it should say... I'm not sure if it's the same for droppers. But we'll soon find out. Um, so to place this, I'm going to have to dismantle some stuff, which is annoying. And anyway, we'll place it like that. When you right-click on it, it says furnace. And then over here... Uh, when we right click on this chest, it now says input. Really good suggestion. Had that a few times uh, in the chat from various people, or the comments even, um, and, and chat on Twitch. <laughs> uh, so do appreciate that. I wonder if you can rename the ender chest. Do you know what? Let's find out. Let's not wait for an episode of myth busting or anything like that. <laughs> let's do it right now. So let's just type in Asuma's chest. That's all I can think of right now. That's about as creative as I get. <laughs> And uh, when we open it, it might actually have a different name. Nope, just Ender Chest. I'm not surprised because... Hey, I wonder when we pick it up if it retains its name as well. It doesn't. It loses its name. Interesting stuff. When you pick up this one, though, it should retain its name, which we can't find out because it's going to go into the, uh, the dropper, I guess. So we've got one more chest. Let's type output on this one. And then we'll put it down on the ground and pick it up again. So, we can see there it says output, and now, fascinating stuff, it doesn't remember it. <laughs> Interesting how that works, isn't it? So, I never made a way to open it from this side, did I? But if you approach it like this, and uh, there was a button here, it should power the piston, it's the same one that the input on the other side does. That is golden! <laughs> Let's go through to the other side here and then close it. Awesome! So that was a nice little addition as well. And all of this has been done. So this one says smelt. Decided to change that from furnace. Got output and input. And all of it is going pretty well. So that is going to be it from me this episode. It has been a little bit shorter. I know. Been working on so many projects and things lately. And you'll see lots of stuff happening around the channel leading into uh, the final months of this year. It's going to be quite exciting. Got lots of things going on. But anyway, that is it from me this episode. If you have enjoyed it, please do leave a like. You know it makes a difference. Just leaving you a nice little reminder. So do appreciate the support, guys. It's been fantastic as always, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.